Hi everyone, welcome, John here. In today's video, I'm going to go as quickly as possible through the very basics of Python. And hopefully some of you guys out there will find this useful if you're beginners or maybe you just need to catch up, brush up on a few skills real quick. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is make sure you've got Python installed. Uh, go to your terminal, your PowerShell, your command prompt type Python if something comes up, you have. But if it says 2.7 something, try typing Python 3. If you don't have anything, you need to download the latest version of Python. We don't use 2.7 anymore. We use Python 3.8, I think, is the latest of recording at this time of recording. Go to the Python website, download it, install it. Make sure you click Add to Path if you're on Windows. If you're on Linux, um, I would recommend going and getting it through your package manager. The next thing you need is a text editor. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you use. You can use any one that you like. Use what you feel comfortable with. If you're not sure which one to use, use VS Code. Google it, it's from Microsoft, it's free, it's open source. Um, if you do use that, make sure you go to the extensions within it, search for Python and install the top one, the one with all the, with all the downloads. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing you need to do is create a new file. Uh, I've got one here, you can see maybe in the top left hand corner, it's called tutorial.py. Make sure all your Python files are saved as .py as that is the correct extension. The first thing we are going to look at is uh, variables. So a variable is basically just a way of storing data in something in Python. So I'm going to call my variable item. Make sure you pick a good variable name. Uh, it can't start with a number, uh, but it can have underscores or whatever in it or numbers after it. It can't start with a number. To store information into this variable, I'm going to use the single quotes and I'm going to type in t-shirt. Now what this is, this is just a text string that I'm storing in item. I'm going to create another one called size and I'm going to store another text string and then I'm going to store a third one and in this one I'm going to store a integer. An integer is a number. The reason why I'm doing this is I can show you the interaction between the two. To print something to the screen we type print and we open up our brackets. If we want to type something in to print out we can do the quote marks and then type in something so let's do let's print something if we save that and run it we can see what we've put in here has come out of the screen if we wanted to print out some the information that was in our variable we can type the variable name in the print and run that bear in mind when we do that we don't need to use the quotation marks so let's do item and then comma and then size and that will print out both of those things in a line and we can add the code on the end as well and print that out. So what that's doing is basically going print this, 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 and this information is all stored in these variables. To concatenate, as in to add things together, uh, string-wise, we can just do a plus, and then we can type in size. And what that does is it takes the two strings and sticks them together. What we can't do is we cannot concatenate a string and an integer. There you go. Well, how we can get around that is we can change our integer to a string in line by typing str and wrapping it around that. Another bracket. And you can see it's concatenated the whole lot together. If we wanted to type some free text in there at the same time, we can do that. So we could do your item is, and then a comma, and then type the item. And then if we add in another one there with some space in, and we didn't type in uh, size. In fact, we didn't need that because we're doing it this way. There we go. That will work just fine like that item. Okay, there we go. Let's add in another variable up here and let's call this one price. And we'll do 9.99. This is a float. Well, that's what it's called. It's basically an integer with a decimal point. It works the same sort of way. Um, if we do price text, we can store that, store this one as a string, so we can then add this on here. There we go. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is lists. Uh, a list is defined in the same way as a variable, so let's call this one products. And a list is always in square brackets like this. And we add items to our, we can create our list by typing in items. So we could do t-shirt and separate it by a comma, uh, sweater, comma, and uh, jeans. 
this is basically as it says it's a list of items now to print this we can print out the whole list like this Let's move that back up there and that will print out our whole list for us if we wanted to print out a specific item from our list we can call that by indexing indexing is done with a square bracket and then a number so Python is a zero index language so the first item in the list is always a zero so that will give us a t-shirt and the second is one and so on if we try and print three we can't because even though we've got three items on our list our first one is zero so the last item in this list is two you can also do minus numbers and this will go and get the last item in the list there we go another useful thing to do is to be able to know how long your list is and to do that we type len and wrap it in brackets and this will I'll get the other bracket tell us that there are three items in our list that's surprisingly useful if we wanted to add an item to our list we would use the append function so we do products dot append and then add an item so let's add trainers and now if we print our list we've got trainers on the end if we put that before we append it we can see that we don't have it and then we've added it if we wanted to remove an item we would do products call our list dot remove and let's remove the uh, t-shirt and we can see there now we only have three items on our list and the t-shirt is gone we could also have lists of lists so if we do let's get rid of that and let's do product details create our list and within that we'll add another list and let's say uh, t-shirt small and uh, let's add an integer that one will do and again we'll add another item and do sweater and large one three five now we'll move this onto a new line so we can see indent that a bit so we can see this is our main list and then within that we've got two other lists so if we print that out print product details we can see we've got a list of lists so if we were to use our indexing again and do zero, we're going to get the first list. Because we're calling the zero index, which is the first one, we're going to go and get the first item from our main list, which happens to be a list. If we wanted to get an item within that list, we can index it again. So zero, zero will give us t-shirt. And zero, one will give us a small. The next thing we're looking at is a dictionary. So let's remove this and let's create a new dictionary. A dictionary is another way of storing information. So let's create a product dictionary again with our, a name and an equals and dictionaries are stored in curly brackets like this. A dictionary is made up of keys and values. So if we want to create a new key, we open the quote and we give it a name. So let's say, uh, name and to define the value we use a colon and then we just then we put the value in that matches that key and let's do t-shirt again each key value pair in a dictionary is uh, separated by a comma and i like to do them on separate lines so it's nice and easy and clear to see what you're doing size again colon small and then uh, code we carry on with that theme like that so if we were to print out our dictionary like this oh I've got something wrong I've missed a comma there we go well now we can print out our dictionary if we want to add a new item a new key and value pair to our dictionary we do that with the update function so let's go product dot update and then if we're adding a new key and value pair we do it the, without the curly braces so let's do uh, color is equal to and then give it a, key, uh, a value so this is going to be our key and this is going to be our value so let's print that out and you can see we've added this in here now if we wanted to update a key that is uh, already in the dictionary we use update again 
but this time we specify with the curly braces which key we want to update. So let's update our color and we'll actually say it's black. And then let's print this again. Oh. So we can see before we update the key, we created it and we gave it the color of white and then we did the update again. But here using the curly braces, we specify which key we, wanna up, we wanted to update and there we can see we've got it updated there. So we're going to combine the lists and dictionaries now and we're going to have a list of dictionaries, another thing which is very useful. So I'm going to say, uh, we're going to amend this slightly, we're going to call this t-shirt um, and we're going to go with, uh, start with color white and let's add create another dictionary here, we'll call this one sweater and we'll say uh, color again and I'll give this Red, make sure we add our comma in. We missed it before. Size, uh, let's say large and code again, which will be an integer. Three, five. So if we wanted to add these to a list, we could say our product list is equal to list of square brackets, list of square brackets t-shirt and sweater. Save that and let's print our product list. And we can see here we've got a list which contains our two dictionaries. Again if we wanted to get the first item we could just by calling zero for the index and we get our first first item here. If we wanted to say get the uh, first key value pairs, the way to do that with a dictionary is to call it by the name. So let's say color and this should give us white. So the last thing we're going to look at real quick is using for loops with our list in our dictionary. So in this instance a for loop is basically saying for something do something. So if we do for x in product list print x that is going to print out each and every item in this list. So what the X bit means, it's uh, our variable that we are storing that information in whilst it's looping through. So it's saying for X in product list, and in this case, the first case, T-shirt is X, so it prints that out, and then it goes back round for every item in our list. If we wanted to do that with a dictionary, so let's do for X in product dict, and then print X, it's only gonna print out the keys of the dictionary. So for a dictionary, there's a different way of getting the keys and values out of your dict. So if we do print, and then again, we do uh, product dict, and then we do dot items. Now I, this is a uh, dot items. This is a method, so it has a double brackets on the end. What this will do, this will return the items in the dictionary. Uh, we can see we've got name, size, and then the code. Now this is actually a tuple, uh, which I haven't covered yet. It's basically very similar to a list, but it can't be changed or amended like a list can. If we wanted to loop through and get every key and value out of our dictionary, we would use this as well, but we would do for x in product dict dot items print and excuse me we need to do two because we need to get the key and the value so we need two variables and we can print key and value like this and that gives us uh, each and every item it loops through and gives and prints out the key and then the value that's associated with that so hopefully you guys found this useful let me know in the comments what you think uh, and if you like it, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye.